The amazing drama you're about to see is a matter of human record. You may believe it or not, but the real people who lived this story, they believe it. They know. They took that one step beyond. <laughs> Inconspicuous, but smart, and right off the park. Few people realize it is the home of the famous stage actress, Elena Stacy. Even fewer know that tonight, after many long, grim months, she's coming home. They've kept that secret. The house is full of tension, secrecy, and something like fear. Because, and let us face it, all of us fear the unknown. But more especially do those who seem to hear it calling in a voice from beyond. Did you want something, Mrs. Marple? No, sir. No, unless... Oh, Mr. Stacy, if you've changed your mind, I can take care of the room in no time. I can have everything packed away and out of sight before she gets here. Thank you, no, Mrs. Marple. We have to leave that up to her. Mrs. Marple. I'm sorry, sir. Forgive me. I, I'm sure you know best. I'll go see about the table. I had Mary clean all the good silver and there's some fresh flowers. Now, wait. Mrs. Marple, I thought I'd explain it to you. There's to be no fuss. This is nothing special about tonight. Look, forget the dining room altogether. We'll, we'll have dinner in here by the fire the way we have a million times. You see, it's... It's to be a night like any other night. Just as though nothing had ever happened, you understand? Yes, sir. As if nothing had ever happened. Hi, darling. Hi, sweetheart. Lovely art. Awesome. Mm. Did you did you notice the leaves falling and oh, a fire? How nice. I thought you might enjoy having dinner by the fire. Mm, wonderful. Though I'm not too hungry. Are you? Not too. Do you think I... I... I haven't changed, have I? You'll always be beautiful. Everyone changes. Ages. I've been thinking of having my hair cut. Uh, uh, Mrs. Marple. Mom. Mom, it's so good to have you home again. 
What are we having for dinner? Oh, a souffle, ma'am, and some nice rare beef that you always used to like. And well, ma'am, it's nothing special. Oh, fine, sounds fine. And I, I see, see you've arranged to put us in here. Yes, ma'am. I'll do that, Miss Marple. Yes. <laughs> Maybe I should get a, a damask in a little darker shape. What do you think that would be a mistake? The world are you talking about? I asked if you thought that the damask should be dark. I'm sure I don't know. Kevin! What are we doing? It couldn't matter less to me what curtains, what, what material. This, this just won't work, this insane little game we're playing. This what game? I'm sorry. All right, Elena. I said insane game. It's just a phrase, but you know what I meant. But you said, your last visit, you promised that the, when I came home, we'd act as though nothing had happened. I was a fool. Your doctor would be the first to agree. Don't you see why it won't work? Because it is an act. Because we're, we're two strangers trying to pretend that nothing has happened. That there's been no tragedy, no loss. There's nothing for us to forget. You spent many months trying to readjust to a harsh truth. There's no reason why you should accept it alone. I'm your husband. I love you. What hurts you hurts me. The only joy I can contemplate is a, is a joy that I can only contemplate with you. That's the reason why we can have no secrets, no pretenses. The reason why it's useless to be talking about curtains and drapes when what's really on our minds is what has happened and how we're going to face up to it from here on in. You're right, Kevin. Excuse me. Oh, that's quite all right. Mrs. Marvel, go right ahead. I'm going upstairs. To change. You do that. Hey. You're all right. Tomorrow, I, I must get Mrs. Marpole to help me put Dee Dee's things away for safekeeping. Yes, darling. I think that would be wise. At least until we need... No. No, Kevin, I I've made up my mind about this. Since I can't have another child of my own, I I'll have none. An adopted child could only remind me of Dee Dee. Oh, I don't want to forget, Dee Dee. 
But I must accept that she's gone. You've come a long way, Elena. I am better. Aren't I? Yes, my darling. Yes. And, and this world of, of unreality I was living in, because I wanted it to be true that, that Dee Dee didn't really die, that, that the truck which struck her down that rainy night was only a nightmare. That delusion won't come back, will it? It, it won't haunt me anymore. No, Elena. No more. Oh, I've missed you so. Oh, darling. I've missed you too. Tonight, we celebrate. I've got the biggest bottle of champagne you've ever seen on ice. You're home again. I'll be right back. Hello. My, how you've grown. Oh, don't be afraid of me anymore. I'm all better now. I don't hate you anymore. I know it wasn't your fault she ran out into the street. Poor Sam. You've missed her too, haven't you? Yes, I'm just silly. I, I, I thought I heard... I, I'm fine. Yes. Of course you are. Of course you are. Yeah. Lass, I know you so your never lip. Some bloody passion shakes your very frame. These are potent. But yet I hope... I hope they do not point on me. And then Othello says, Peace and be still. And then I say, I will so. Oh. Alas, why know you so your never lip? Some bloody passion shakes your very frame. These are portents. But yet I hope, I hope they do not point on me. Hi, oh, sweetheart. Hi, darling. Mm. Something smells good. What is it? Mm. Get your hot roasted chestnuts right here. Oh, nice. What did I ever do to deserve you? That is a good question. As a matter of fact, lately, very little. Why well, is that nice? What about that sweat I've been knitting? Oh, come on now, Lena. Knitting. But don't knock it. It's a great pastime. Exactly. Kevin, don't, don't ask me again. I can't do it, really, I can't. Why can't you? You're absolutely brilliant in the part at Stratford. No one's forgotten you yet. That was years ago. Before Dee Dee. You know very well, you watch the mayor like a hawk, waiting for a good play. Any play? Any play, except the play I'm doing. You know very well why I've put off casting. I know why, and it isn't because you, you can't find a, a dozen other actresses better suited. I don't want a dozen other actresses. You'll be marvelous. No, 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 no. Something, something else will, will turn up. I, 
couldn't do it to you. Your whole future's wrapped up in this production. I, I can't let your pity for me... Pity? What are you talking about? I need you. Can you honestly trust me? What if... What, what if I, I lost my grip like, like before? What, what if I became ill again and, and let you down? You won't. You won't. You make me feel so sure. Don't think I... I don't understand what, you, what you're doing. You don't need me. I need the chance, like, like therapy. Like the time that, that horse threw me and you made me get back. No, no more talk. You're going to be in rehearsal tomorrow morning. No back talk. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm going to release it to the press. They're waiting on the doorstep. Practically. Hello, Herman. Yes, yeah, she's responded to it just beautifully. Yes, yeah, she's very excited about it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, she's accepted. Now we can pull all the plugs on publicity. Mm hmm. Yes, by all means. Mama. Look, first off, I want you to get a hold of Wilson and Leonard Lyons. Mama. Mama. Oh, that's brilliant. Mama. Mama. Yes, of course. Say something Mama. like. Uh, Mama. Elena Stacy. Don't you hear? Next triumphant return to the stage. Othello, Shakespeare's immortal tragedy. Mama. Mama. Yes, Mama. 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 You can take it from there. You can go on and just soup it up and give it a real whiz bang campaign. Mama. 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 Yes, of course. Elena, I don't know what to tell you. It's just too stiff. Now, try it again, please. Why, sweet Othello? Devil! I have not deserved this. Oh, devil, devil. If that the earth could teem with women's tears, each drop she falls would prove a crocodile. Out of my sight! I will not stay to offend you. Kevin, can I take five minutes? Fine, darling. Goodbye, I think that's the right level. The way we discussed it at lunch, I think it's proof that uh, we've really got something. Mm -hmm. All right. Dr. Harvey. Ah, Miss Stacy. How do you do? It's so good of you to come to the theater. Oh, well, frankly, Miss Stacy, if you hadn't sounded so so distraught over I, the telephone... I do appreciate it. Uh, where shall I sit? Oh, this will be fine. Now, this will uh, give us a chance to get a uh, preliminary idea of just how much loss exists. Loss? Mm-hmm. When did you first become aware of a loss of hearing? Doctor, I, I, I don't really have any trouble hearing. But sometimes, people going deaf do hear things that, that aren't there, don't they? I, I, I mean, I read somewhere. Bells, telephone bells, music, all sorts of weird noises. Yes, that happens. It's called tinnitus. Now, we'll get into your medical history later. Meanwhile, if I can just fit this, like this, so. Comfortable? Comfortable? Uh, fine, thank you. Fine. Now. What was that? You heard that. Fine. Whenever you hear, raise your hand. I didn't hear anything. Uh, doctor, th that, that could mean that 
that I, I really am... Please, Miss Stacy. Don't excite yourself. You didn't hear a tone that time because there was none. I tricked you. Now, once more, please. You, Dr. John Harvey, there. there's nothing to be alarmed about. The young lady simply has a lively imagination. She imagined she might be going deaf. But, as a matter of fact, after preliminary examination, I'd say her hearing is perfectly normal. Deaf? Ear doctor? What the devil are you doing with an ear doctor? I'm going to be all right. Till she comes. As truly as to heaven, I do confess the vices of my blood. Her father loved me, oft invited me, still questioned me the story of my life. My noble father, I do perceive here a divided duty. To you, I am bound for life and education. My life and education both to learn me how to respect you. You are the lord of duty. I am hitherto your daughter. But here's my husband. And so much duty as my mother showed to you, preferring you before her father. So much I challenge that I may profess you to the more, my lord. saved Elena Stacy's life. It saved her sanity. For now she knew that the haunting voice was not the echo of a disturbed mind, but an incredible warning. Even more comforting is the thought that possibly one living child was the courier for another child of beloved memory. In any event, the psychic phenomenon we have just seen is called clear audio, which means the hearing rather than the seeing of things that have yet to happen. In a moment, a word about next week's step beyond. Next week, and every week, we'll be bringing you the personal records of the rarest kind of human experience, man's adventure in the world of the unknown, that mysterious psychic world beyond our five senses. This is your invitation to take with us that astonishing one step beyond.